Judgeless Horseman here. It's February the 7th. Uh, this is the second video of today. I um, thought I'd just uh, talk a bit more about private placements and ones I am participating in and you know how I well like to look at private placements I guess. Um, first of all these are the ones I'm currently uh, participate, participating in. Uh, Elf Exploration, which is a sponsor, uh, District Metals, which is a sponsor, Headwater Gold, a sponsor, Sanyu Gold, uh, a new position for me, not a sponsor, and Reina Silver, uh, I have not a, I don't have current position in Reina Silver uh, either. So, okay, um, how do you think in terms of private placements. I mean, I, I think there are a lot of cheap companies out there. A lot of cheap companies, you can certainly make money without being in private placements. Uh, but private placements with warrants uh, are like risk-free extra upside. That's pretty much it. And that's why it skews the risk reward ratio so much. Uh, because obviously if a stock does really well and uh, the warrants end up being you know, well in the money, you get uh, even more upside, but you don't pay any extra. You pay for the units, so you get uh, one share. And uh, if you're lucky, you get a full warrant, uh, otherwise, uh, Nowadays, you can see half a warrant, and uh, typically that comes down to you know access of capital. Let's say Alpha Exploration is in Africa, perception is a bit worse, obviously, uh, and the rest ones were able to you know attract uh, new investors or new capital, but just offering up uh, one unit consisting of one share and one half of one warrant. So if you buy 100,000 units in the District Metals private placement, you get 100,000 shares and 50,000 warrants. So not as much torque to the upside as uh, with full warrants. And again, uh, or obviously that changes the risk reward a lot. And I mean, some companies out there uh, uh, typically I haven't talked about them that much uh, like uh, Outcrop Gold and Silver I participated in that private placement uh, simply because uh, you know a high grade silver story you had I think perhaps even three year full warrants if I remember correctly uh, simply too good of an opportunity to pass up uh, I think they were the placement was around 17 cents or something like that uh, so it's like yeah okay I'll take uh, you know uh, I mean and I, I, I've talked about this uh, I mean a few months back it's like if there was ever a time you should uh, get in try to get into private placements in you know above average stories obviously uh, uh, it would be then because you want the high delta uh, buying into private placements with warrants at let's say a sentiment high let's say it's already overvalued or fully valued I mean what are the odds that the risks are to the downside in that case whereas if a whole sector is you know cheap as as hell and you get half or full warrants uh, first of all the risks are considerably to the upside on average and if you get uh, let's say two year warrants you have two years for the sector sentiment to go from atrociously bad to even okay and you might be in the money on your warrants and if we go obviously from really depressed sentiment to great sentiment within two years I mean you could make a lot of money uh, but it, it's more about numbers game and personally i mean i, I think that kind of goes without saying that you you kind of want 
storage that could really you know quantum leap let's say or have considerable growth prospects or the chance of a uh, discovery or just made a discovery something that could create as much value as possible within two years if the warrants are for two years uh, take alpha exploration for example uh, Units are priced at 70 cents, so you get one share per unit for seven. You pay 70 cents per share, and you get a full warrant with a strike of 105, I think. Yeah, 105 for 24 months. Uh, so if Alpha Exploration within the next two years ever trade above 105 you can exercise your warrants let's say it trades at 140 first of all uh, to reach there the shares would have gone up 50 percent so you would have a 50 percent profit and then all of a sudden you kind of get double the exposure to the upside uh, because all of a sudden from this point and higher uh, well, here you can buy 50,000 warrants at 105, theoretically, if you exercise immediately. So, in reality, or theoretically, because you need to actually uh, exercise and book profits, etc., but pretty much your, the upside exposure doubles from this point on. And if it goes below that, I mean, you, you still have your 50,000 shares, but you don't you don't get punished for the warrants. I, worst case scenario, I'll, I mean, they will uh, expire worthless. And I mean, in a worst case scenario, uh, the stocks would go, the stock would go to zero, and you lose your whatever capital you uh, used to buy uh, 50,000 units for. Uh, but still, that's like risk-free upside. So it's it's incredibly attractive. Let's say alpha goes to one. Uh, I used one forty as an example because it would be double from here. Uh, so I mean you would be up a hundred percent on your shares, and you would have fifty thousand shares extra you could buy for one o five, and potentially sell at one o. 140 so you would bank a 33 percent return on 50,000 shares as well as a hundred percent return on 50,000 shares the original shares uh, that is obviously very <laughs> good so all of a sudden you have a 133 uh, percent return instead of a 100% return and I mean the higher it goes uh, I mean that the torque really Kicks in so the higher it goes from the strike price uh, here you get 157 uh, from the Original shares and also you add an, ex an extra 72 uh, percent uh, which is uh, around 230 uh, percent that's really good obviously uh, so in this case you kind of get a uh, 33 percent extra upside boost and uh, yeah and again it doesn't co you don't get punished you only capture more theoretical upside uh, but that you have to account for that obviously the the prospect of even more returns if things go well because the risk reward is like okay how what's the probability of success and failure how much do i lose if you know failure comes around how much do i uh, win if uh, uh you know blue sky materializes or something like that uh, i don't know exactly what the let's see Alpha as is at 41, so I don't, uh, how, I don't remember how much they're raising. 5 million they're trying to raise. Uh, let's say it uh, yeah, goes up to like 40, 47, 48 million Canadian. They do have a lot of 
target and the focus as it says here they will focus on the burnout discovery they will drill 15,000 meters this year uh, and this is the burna discovery which they've already you know as they outline uh, kind of the hits they've been seeing there i mean from 15,000 meters given how good results they've had from you know quite limited drilling i would expect a lot of uh, more good results to come along and given that i think the yeah 24 months so basically they expire these warrants expire in 24 months so the question is then like theoretically within two years uh, given aberna and all their other projects let's say they drill i don't know I mean, if things go well, let's say they drill 50,000 meters over the next two years. Let's say within 18 months, it will be obvious if this is a very large gold system. And maybe they've actually, you know, made some more discoveries or ex uh, expanded on the discoveries they already have in hand. Uh, they have the obviously the headwind of being in Africa but in Eritrea Eritrea is quite I mean it's quite okay especially when you have this kind of management team involved uh, I mean they have a bunch of experience from Eritrea uh, and Africa overall I mean these are mine fund mine finders and actually mine sellers um, so again it's yes it's it's kind of a high risk high reward story but if things go really well and this turns into a major discovery let's say within yes 18 months it's like yeah this is a multi-million ounce high grade gold system i mean would i be you know would it be totally unreasonable especially in a better sentiment environment because that's also what we're betting on that sentiment will return to the gold space within two years Especially if it starts off from a very low level, I mean, the only material change is higher because it, I mean, the change from abysmal sentiment to even more abysmal. Yes, I mean, sure, anything could go from, you know, dirt cheap to dirtier, cheapier. Uh, but still, I mean, when the sector turns like we saw in 2016 or, or from the bottom of the flash crash, I mean, it can really ramp hundreds of percent in juniors, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so we're betting on that, too. And I mean, if things go really well, etc. I mean, you, you could make, uh, I mean, this isn't even that high. I mean, uh, well, let's say it goes to uh, $3 at least. Uh, so that would be what's that like 70 uh, yeah okay I'm, uh, I mean let, let's say a bit over 200 million uh, market cap which is not uh, outrageous at all I would say uh, yeah something like that I mean in that case theoretically you could be sitting at a 500% profit including you know the exposure from the warrants and uh, again as you see I mean the higher it goes the more torque you actually get from the warrants uh, so from this first level I used you had I think a 30% additional uh, additional return on your invested money all of a sudden up here you have 430 seven percent from your actual from the actual shares the one you bought and got in uh, from the placement uh, but you also get 258 percent return from uh, being able to buy uh, 50 000 new shares and pay a fixed price of 105 so that's 258 percent extra return so that's more than a 50 percent boost to your total return you know relative to if you had no warrants so again uh, what we want is the potential for a material revaluation within the time period uh, of the warrant before they expire that's why it's like i mean if you had if you bought barrick right now if they had done a financing you get 
uh, warrants that has a you know strike of 40 percent higher than what where barrick is it's like yeah barrick would need to go up 40 percent just to get anything from the warrants and maybe you know 50 percent more to uh, well be really happy about it but it's not going to be too easy for barrick to double from 50 billion or, or more than uh, well yeah double from 50 billion for example so we want this kind of you know quantum potential and obviously in the case of alpha exploration we have uh, the beginnings of a possible discovery uh, these are just the early stage results which are very good but we want to be in at the ground floor of a possible major discovery obviously uh, and I show some discovery stories in the in the last video I did. I mean, you could see that ramp in some of the discovery stories, and uh, the bulk of the returns were actually uh, just in the you know uh, several early months. But then, of course, you have like Great Bear, for example, that actually climbed for uh, three years or something. You know, steady decline, uh, steady climb. Uh, had periods where it consolidated, etc., etc. But I mean, uh, uh, theoretically, we would want a company to uh, be in the beginning stage of a discovery and be very aggressive. So within two years, we have the absolute uh, highest upside potential from a value perspective. Because of of course, I mean, they they plan to drill fifteen thousand meters at a burner only. Uh, they could, they might as well like, yeah, we're, we're going to drill 2,000 meters. Obviously, you can't create as much value from just drilling 2,000 meters as uh, 15. So you really want that kind of, uh, you want them to be aggressive, obviously, because uh, the, the higher they go within the warrant period, uh, the more boosted your return is. And that's why it's like getting warrants in a mature play I, I don't think that makes too much sense uh, unless it is a sent it is at a sentiment low like right now because we've seen like Bear Creek mining could can literally or typically crashes 80 percent then goes up 400 uh, percent over and over so even if you had a mature play uh, but was very cheap due to sentiment I mean it would actually make sense uh, to have you know participate in those because you have warrants uh, and two years for sentiment to turn and the cheaper it is obviously it leaves more upside potential uh, because I mean let's face it if sentiment was even worse and alpha had to finance at 50 cent and the warrants would be at 70 cents I mean first of all it would be much cheaper obviously so there's even more upside potential if you know uh, they would find something that the market would value at 300 million if you started off at like 35 million and 50 million i mean there there's a you know a few extra multi baggers actually uh, but that is the idea uh, so it's like you you want well first of all you would prefer full warrants because again here it doubles the exposure otherwise if this was a half warrant uh, you would get uh, exposure for another 25,000 shares instead, which is obviously less. And you also want, I mean, the longer the time horizon you have, the longer you uh, have time for the market sentiment to uh, pick up or more value creation to have happened, etc. Uh, but I I, uh, I like this. I mean, again, there's absolutely no guarantees. It's, it's just that you, if blue sky materializes let's say for a discovery play you would you could make a lot more with warrants so you need to be right less from a hit rate uh, standpoint uh, obviously i mean if if this were to hit 300 million which i don't think is out of the question in two years uh, theoretically you could uh, be sitting at you know almost a 700 percent return which would pay in that case for uh, uh, seven other stories that went to uh, literally zero so if you spread bet uh, a bunch of again you don't need to have a big position i talked about over gold uh, last video uh, i participated at, i think financing was a 10 cent warrant is a 20 cent all of a sudden it's like it went from a sub one percent position to uh you know 
I think, what is that? Almost eight times the exposure to the upside uh, uh, once the... No, that uh, that's not right, I think. I don't remember how many... How much did I invest? Ah, anyway, it's like that was a sub 1% bet with full warrants. They picked up uh, lithium project. So it's like, hey, if if nothing happens, I mean, they have a gold and silver project as well. But if nothing happens, sentiment doesn't return. I'll at least keep the shares and they still have a gold and silver project and a lithium property. But I got like two years for sentiment to pick up or something good to happen. And I will catch a full warrant storing at 20 cents. And uh, the, I got the shares at 10 cents, uh, which I mean, at the time, uh, and offer was really cheap. I don't know if I would call it really cheap right now. But it's like, yeah, I don't know how long it was. But let's say in a, in a couple of months from participating in that, on paper, I'm up like I don't know 300 percent or something um, and obviously the higher offer goes uh, within two years the more I would have made on my uh, investment because the higher it goes the, the more extra juice you get from the warrants uh, anyway uh, yeah alpha again it's like I, I probably uh, well first of all I probably wouldn't bother with uh, alpha uh, if not for this uh, exceptional team involved here and which they've proven why they are an exceptional team uh, because they keep making discoveries and uh, this is like yeah a, a pretty much virgin discovery this is not a they're not re-drilling something sure there's some colonial workings etc but that's not that's not modern this is a brand new discovery with the obvious uh, potential here i mean it's six kilometers already and, and still open and up, you know up to two kilometers wide we don't know what could be here but it's like yeah six kilometer strike potential that is pretty obscene uh that could i mean the footprint if this system is you know somewhat continuously mineralized if even that uh who knows what the size potential is and given that they've hit such good holes this early on it's like again which i've talked about before either they are extremely lucky and just hit the areas where there's very good mineralization or this is simply a very robust and potentially very large gold system so they weren't really lucky it's just that there's good mineralization in a lot of areas uh, after the next fifteen thousand meter holes yeah i think we'll have a good sense on that and obviously i expect them to have more uh you know 100 gram meter plus intervals uh, so uh, quite a few headline numbers i would expect over the next 12 months to 24 months next up district metals uh, i mean i'm uh, it's like in my ho home territory uh, i've been on a site visit i really like garrett ainsworth who is the ceo uh, he's, uh, in my opinion, a very good guy and very professional. He was with the Next Gen Energy success. Uh, he spearheaded that, uh, I guess one could say. He knows a lot about uranium and he, he has picked up some great assets. I mean, I invested in District Metals to begin with. Uh, here you can see Management Board and Advisors. You get uh, Dougie, Ingel and uh, McNamara. Heinrad, he's he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, met him as well, uh, and I I mean I participated for their base metal projects, and they started off with started off with Tom Tebo only. Then they added Gruberiet and Sverdsjö, and now they've added uh, the uh, Viking deposit. They the uh, district applies for mineral license that, en uh, that encompasses the majority of the polymetallic Viking deposit. So this is the second largest uranium deposit on planet Earth, as far as I understand. It has also has vanadium, mol molybdenum, nickel, copper, and zinc. So it's just a huge polymetallic uh, low-grade deposit. I mean, low grades per metal, especially. Uh, but just contains an enormous 
uh, um, uh, um, you know, an enormous tonnage, let's say, 2.8 billion tons. Uh, that is absolutely huge. Uh, and even if you have 68% of that, that is obviously huge. Um, and uh, here you can see DMX license application. I think there's somebody who uh, might have applied for these ones here. But you can see mineralized domains. It's like, yeah, it, it's huge. I mean, you, you could make multiple smaller mines in, in that one. Obviously, one would think economies of scale would be good. But anyway, it's like uh, they believe or it is thought that uh, the ban on uranium mining will be lifted in March, potentially. So that's like yeah, a month from now or so. Uh, if that happens, all of a sudden you could actually theoretically mine this second largest uranium deposit in the world. W well, it's not like they could go ahead and mine it uh, uh, ASAP. And obviously you can see the scale here. Uh, it would, I mean, it's just absolutely enormous. I mean, I don't think the whole deposit is this large or maybe it is, who knows? Uh, I, I guess we will get more details. But what I like about district metals, uh, well, uh, first of all, Okay, you get half warrants in this one. I would have preferred full warrants, but that's like, yeah, it's good for uh, current shareholders. I mean, there's less uh, potential dilution and obviously it, it means uh, less money from warrants, but hopefully they'll be in an upward trajectory and can raise at higher uh, share prices. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I think this metal is cheap just based on their base metal projects in the Bergslagen area. And now they also have like a super beta option on uh, the second largest uranium deposit in the world with uh, vanadium and uh, nickel and yada yada. Uh, so obviously that has that quantum leap potential. Uh, base metals are unfortunately not that sexy. Uh, so that's why they've been so, in my opinion, extremely undervalued based on the base metal targets uh, they have or projects they have confirmed discoveries already uh, but I think yeah I think they're cheap just based on them and you now also have a super beta option potential which fits with you know hey I, I don't mind getting a half warrant for that uh, next up headwater gold uh, price at 0.38 per unit and you get a half warrant at 55 okay um, a bit lower than the current share price and you get a half warrant at 55 cents i mean that's not sure i would prefer a full warrant but it's like yeah it recently reached 44 cents it's not too uh, long from 55 and all of a sudden you get uh 50 percent share extra uh, uh, 50% extra exposure on a you know, share equivalent basis, uh, let's say. And I just, you know, uh, I've talked about Headwater. Uh, it's in the HODL portfolios. Uh, I really like uh, what Caleb is doing. Uh, and of course, I mean, if you get new crest to uh, do earning deals on four of your projects, uh, it means you're doing something right. Most people would be happy to have a uh, you know thumbs up on one project, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I mean, seven extra projects. So they get like eleven projects, and they continuously go shuffle through additional projects. So they might have more in the pipeline. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of like. Well, first of all, Newcrest. Uh, is funding they have a, a strict I, I think they have to put in 10 million Canadian in the ground at these four projects uh, even if they choose later to walk away but that's like 10 million Canadian that goes headwater gold's way regardless of what the results are that's obviously great because that's currently half their market cap and they get a 10% management fee uh, as you know money back let's say earns 10% management fee and uh, I mean if one of these four becomes a new crest 
uh, type deposit. If they retain 25% of that uh, and uh, a net smelter roy, I mean, obviously that would be worth a lot more than 20 or whatever the market cap is going to be after uh, the this financing. But this money they're raising is going to be used on their 100% owned properties because Newcrest is putting the bills on these four ones. And they already have uh, a couple of discoveries as well. So I, I just love this shotgun approach. I mean, I, I know Alistair uh, Vidal, for example, is also involved. And he's involved with inflection resources. And they have the kind of kind of the same uh, approach. You know, inflection has an enormous land package and uh, many, many targets. And Headwater has, well, first of all, like with inflection management and insiders own a lot. They have a lot of skin in the game. They're going to be worrying about Headwater more than you and me. Uh, uh, not many warrants or options outstanding. Sure, there'll be a bit more now. New Crest is shareholder. Uh, but, but it's like 11 juniors in one, pretty much. Uh, and you have a market cap of uh, not much. I mean, if you think about the value or the price you're paying per project, uh, it's ridiculously low. I mean, yeah, this is, in my opinion, super cheap. It's all the projects are in the US. So you, you're in a tier one jurisdiction, especially Nevada, obviously. But Idaho, for example, is considered to be very good from a policy perception standpoint. And uh, they are after high-grade epithermal deposits, which don't need to be very large to be very valuable. If they find 500,000 ounces to 1.5 million ounces or something at good grades, that could be worth several hundred millions because uh, thanks to the margins involved. Um, yeah, it's just uh, from a risk reward perspective, you can't. Uh, uh, yeah, I think from an early stage explorer standpoint, this is probably the best bet around. I would think. I mean, enough so that I actually think it's you know uh, it's okay to have a. Uh, 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 above one percent position even though it's early stage it's just that it's uh has so many avenues for potential upside uh technical voter of confidence from newcrest on four of their projects newcrest would fund if they if one of some of these become major discoveries uh they will fund a lot of drilling and then Headwater can also explore their fully owned. So it's just, in my opinion, it's just a crazy from a risk reward perspective. It's like 11 legit targets, four with a major signing off on, yeah, this looks legit for, well, a bit over 20 million Canadian. That is just absurd. I mean, again, I keep harping on about Brun uh, Brunswick exploration, but I mean, they have a market cap of like 150 million. Uh, and they they haven't drilled, they themselves haven't drilled a single drill hole. I mean, imagine if this was lithium. Jesus, th this company would be worth a lot. It's not apples to apples, obviously, but it's like, my, my point is simply that uh, I mean, for anyone who was in very early in the lithium stories, uh, who bought when it, they were really cheap and nobody wanted the lithium stories, uh, their patience has paid off in spades. Some juniors from the bottom is, I mean, yeah, Patriot Better Metals, 30 bagger, sure, that was a discovery as well. I mean, that was a legit, I think, tier one discovery in the lithium space. 
Uh, but almost regardless, if you just if, if you just had a high conviction of lithium thanks to the EV uh, revolution and green wave, etc., and you just picked up a bunch of lithium companies when nobody wanted them, like nobody wants gold and silver juniors or even copper juniors for that matter. Uh, when sentiment changed, uh, I, I mean, I, I know uh, there's a reason why Brunswick has gone up, etc. But it wouldn't have gone up this much if, if not for very frothy sentiment in lithium. And you can read that on the on Twitter. It's like uh, almost everybody's noticing that the lithium market is very frothy. Uh, that doesn't mean that lithium is going to collapse or that uh, the stories out there in the lithium space won't be multibaggers from these levels i'm just uh, commenting on the fact that for sure sentiment in the lithium space is a lot higher than the gold silver and copper space right now i'm not early in the lithium phase we're already at some form of greed levels that is not to say uh, that is not the same thing uh, when it comes to the gold juniors because again if if similar concept as this would be if headwater gold would have ha been named headwater lithium instead and had 11 uh, 11 solid lithium projects and a major lithium miner is earning into four of them there's no chance in hell that headwater would be trading at this valuation simply from a sentiment perspective anyway yeah uh, so this i i think i i yeah i, I really really like headwater gold uh, hopefully they will make one or more significant discoveries and who knows maybe i mean we know newcrest might get bought out i don't know how that changes their plans let's say uh, we ne know they need still uh, need to spend around 10 million Canadian. Uh, that is not uh, optional, as far as I understand. Uh, but maybe it's like okay, maybe what if Newmont actually acquires Newcrest and they become a I don't know what it would be up to like se uh, 70 billion, and maybe they find something good in one of these Ford uh, earning projects, and uh, but the new super large Newmont says well it's not big enough for us uh, uh, anymore simply because they're, they're so big I mean that might still be worth 500 million whatever and let's say it goes back to headwater and uh, later on uh, mid-tier or something buys it uh, so I don't know what's gonna shake uh, I don't know how that acquisition from well potential acquisition is gonna play out if it will uh, uh, go ahead and uh, what's going to happen after that it, I, I just don't think uh, I actually think it might be good or bad <laughs> uh, for Headwater but it's so cheap and the produce looks so good or the portfolio looks looks so good uh, that I don't mind that at all so yeah I'm, I'm taking a decent uh, uh, position I'm, I'm I'm, I'm uh, participating with a pretty decent amount, uh, not, uh, you know, crazy numbers, uh, but uh, uh, over 1% at least. Uh, San Gold is a new one, raised a total of 2.5 million, uh, 9 uni uh, million units at a price of 27 per unit. Each unit will be confirmed as one common share and one one half of one common share purchase warrant for the nice thing here is it's 36 months so it's three years instead of two which is kind of more typical but it's a half warrant so it's like yeah okay you would want a full warrant but at least it gives them additional uh, year to create even more value uh, so i mean theoretically um, if they created a lot more value uh, uh, in three years than two years uh, you know might pay off even more even even if you you know the option would be to have a full warrant over two years i mean that's highly theoretical uh, but again it's like yeah you get an extra year of uh, potential revaluation higher which is nice as far as the story goes um, 
it's an African expiration story uh, in Guinea and there's a bunch of mines as you can see I mean hummingbird is their predicted discovery made their big discovery and that that is a full-blown success story so you, you can certainly have uh, you know multi baggers or I think that's actually a way I, I think somebody said today that from the bottom tick I think predictive discovery became a 60 bagger I'm not 100% sure on that uh, but certainly uh, it seems that success in uh, this part of Africa can get rewarded handsomely uh, and you see some big mines and you have Nord Gold here, you have Anglo Gold, yeah, Hummingbird, Robex, I don't know, Managem, uh, what is that? I think that might be, what is that? A s I think that's like a state-owned miner of some Arab country, I'm not 100% sure. And then, you you know, in the surrounding areas, you have even more companies. Barrick is actually there, Endeavor, Resolute Mining, B2 Gold, Allied Gold, another Barrick, and Endeavor again. Not far off. Uh, so yeah, uh, success here is probably uh, gonna get valued uh, because other stories have gotten valued here and there's a majors around. Uh, and it's an early stage exploration story. 25,000 meters of RC drilling across seven targets planned which is again aggressive that's what you want to see you want to see max amount of value creation and they've already hit some uh, nice intercepts i mean most of these include very high grade intervals over one meter but like bonanza over one meter bonanza bonanza uh, bonanza well high grade two bonanza and high grade and they have like seven targets or was that the other project actually uh, well, seven key targets. They have three projects in total. So obviously, it's like if they hit something, uh, appears to have potential scale, scale potential, 3.5 kilometers, a lot of go uh, golden smoke. Uh, so again, this high risk, high reward bet, uh, and you get three years uh, of additional upside from half warrants in case it works out. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, simply nice. <laughs> and the last one is Reina Silver, uh, which I had my eyes on, but it's like, yeah, there's so many cheap stories out there. I mean, I, I literally can't buy them all, but the financing terms were really <laughs> good, as you also can see that it was upsized and then upsized again. Uh, 30 cents, the units are priced at 30 cents per unit, you get one share at 30 cents and you also get uh, one common share purchase warrant with each warrant entitling the uh, holder there of purchasing an additional common share. So here you have full warrant for 36 months. Uh, at 40 cents uh, so yeah shares have gone down to the uh, well the placement price so it's at 30 cents now you have a full warrant that starts to kick in at 40 cents it recently, I mean, it's like, what is that? Uh, when was this? Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit over a uh, well, yeah, a bit over a month ago, it was at forty cents. Then you, your exposure to the upside doubles, and they have three years to get the share price above forty cents for the warrants to kick in. That is a good old deal, though. And I mean, it's it's Peter McGaw involved. Uh, they have, uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they have three projects. A Medicine Springs, Nevada. So it's like, yeah, if they have success there, obviously it could be worth something. Uh, and uh, and they have, I think the other two are in Mexico. Uh, 
right Chihuahua State and obviously I mean they're leading with the other products I, I mean I, I think they are legit I think one product they got from Mag Silver which obviously is Peter McGaw's baby I think that's Gui Gui <laughs> or however you pronounce that uh, Santa Eulalia Mining District. If you follow Western Alaska, you will recognize Santa Eulalia, which is a huge CRD system. Uh, it's one of the largest carbonate replacement deposits. And that also is like, yeah, it just also makes me more bullish on Western Alaska, who already have uh, a CRD discovery and they pretty much own the whole district uh, so i mean theoretically they might have something like santa eulalia uh, and have 100 percent of it anyway uh, so they have two legit products this is the one they got i think from uh mag silver uh deep poles very deep poles so it's like okay is this the best kind of exploration I would want like mm, it's kind of you know it's, it's kind of deep it's pretty expensive to drill that deep obviously one would want uh, you know the mineralization to start here or whatever so you could prove up for less money and uh, prove up a larger deposit even quicker but they have three projects and that includes the medicine springs uh, which i would think could be you know the the flagship let's say i mean here you have the land package up here district scale reconnaissance i mean you can see the scale board this is two kilometers uh they've hit here 2.4 meters or 1000 grams per ton ag here i don't know if they what they hit here it doesn't say but over here they have 7.4 meters of 186 and 4.7 meters of 274 uh obviously there's some distance here and they got peter mcgaw which is like the godfather of crd systems and you actually have like crescent capital uh, apparently mag silver is a uh, investor as well and and the uh, sprot yada yada uh so yeah it's like do i think this is a you know bad investment if you have uh Peter McGaw, for example, with like three projects that he likes. No, I don't think so. Uh, do I like it a lot more with a full warrant for 36 months? Yeah, especially since you have three cans to kick. And uh, again, I mean, if, if they ended up drilling here and didn't really make any bullseye type target yeah that i mean that wouldn't be optimal obviously but it's like yeah i i could see medicine springs or any of these projects uh uh become material you know have some material success and again it's like they have 36 months and it's not like it's starting off out with like yeah it's for sure has a peter mcgo premium for example for three projects. i mean if you just divide it by three it's a bit over 10 million Canadian per project. I don't think that is outrageous at all. Uh, obviously not, if you're a you know current shareholder, that's obviously not the, maybe the thing you would really want to see, a full warrants. Uh, but for anyone that has the you know potential to participate, I, I think again is, uh, Yeah, it, it just gives the risk reward so completely. And and you you need to be right less often because of that extra warrant kicker. Uh, so it kind of I mean you you can can be a worse investor. And obviously if Peter McGaw is involved, it's like yeah, there's the the projects the targets are legit. So you kind of you know that already. That doesn't mean there's a guarantee that it will succeed, but still. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, and and I mean, if if anyone wants to uh, see if there's any room or anything like that, uh, I would shoot the companies uh, an email. 
and ask about it. And you know, some people ask me how you uh, do, uh, you know, participate in a product placement. There are some requirements. Uh, I guess that. Well, one requirement that is typically used is the fact that you need to have one million dollars of, uh, uh, well, net assets, pretty much. And you, yeah, you send a company uh, an email, uh, typically ask if there's room and they ask, okay, how much do you want? Well, I want X amount of units, let's say. Okay, we can do that. Uh, they send you a sub agreement document uh, which you have to fill in, and uh, it also includes wire details where you actually send the money to pay for your units. And then you also write in the sub agreement uh, stuff like, okay, where do you want the shares delivered? You can take physical possession. Uh, that's how I started out when I did not have a so, uh, have an account in Canada with the Canadian brokers uh, that's a bit of a hassle because you get the physical share certificates home but it's like yeah how am I gonna sell these uh, I, I need to get them to some kind of you know broker so I ended up actually the first private placement I joined in I just uh, yeah got them got physical share certificates and I didn't know how to sell them so I was forced to hodl <laughs> until I set up a Canadian account and then I simply mailed the uh, share certificates to my broker in Canada uh, where they get uh, transferred to, uh, you know, a digital version and put into my account there. Um, but anyway, it's like, uh, for better or for worse, uh, it's in one way it's easier to make money the more you have simply because you can in that case participate in private placement but that's not to say that i don't want to discourage people from doing you know a lot of due diligence i started off with no private placements my the hotel accounts i manage and my concentrated active portfolio they have done very well without any private placements and without any leverage so it's just another tool that when you know yeah it's, it's basically it can spice up the upside and it, it skews the risk reward but it's like you know, I keep talking about it but a case like for example magda mining I don't have any warrants in that it's such a good case uh, the risk reward is great without warrants it's not one of these high risk high reward stories it's already cheap based on what they have so that's typically you know those kind of situations i have in the hodl portfolios where it's like yeah uh, they are cheap now and uh, you know they can grow a lot and you don't even need warrants it's like western alaska one of the best uh, uh, growth place i know of in terms of you know uh, probable and potential upside uh, I don't think they had any warrants in their last financings if I remember correctly I don't think the first financing even had warrants uh, so it kind of goes to show that uh, well, well that's good for current share shareholders and obviously I think Western Alaska is such a good story that I don't even need warrants yes it's kind of high risk high reward because it's exploration but it's like uh, it's a it's a special situation. I mean, they just uh, started to pull on a you know CRD system. Uh, so again, it's not like you need to have warrants; otherwise, you can't make any money. It's just that the the ability to participate in private placements, and especially if the warrant terms are really good, in a depressed sector environment uh yeah yeah i mean uh, there's some you know uh talk about opportunity I'll, I'll just put it like that but obviously if, if something is really cheap already it doesn't need a warrant to be cheap it's just that hey if a particular story works out and you have 
warrants you'll simply make more but that is not to say that you won't make anything if you don't have warrants or you should only buy stuff if you get warrants uh, etc I, I don't think that is I mean I, I think I would do well in this market well I've shown that I can do well without any warrants at all uh, so uh, I mean the at the end of the day it's the due diligence etc that uh, is the best thing I mean sometimes I might be who knows I might have participated in companies simply be, uh, in private placement simply because they had warrants and used money that should really have gone into a stock I could buy in the open market with no warrants but maybe the case without warrants in that particular stock was actually better than uh, the case I entered into a private placement because I got warrants so who knows maybe sometimes you fool yourself because oh yeah I get warrants you think about you know oh hey if this goes well etc and you might actually you know shoot yourself in the foot I mean that probably has happened uh, once or twice uh, I would say, yeah, no, I know for, uh, well, I, I think I can almost guarantee that some private placements I probably shouldn't have entered into. Uh, but again, you can't just look at what happened or the results and say, yeah, okay, now in hindsight, I know that that story didn't go well. Uh, so you don't know, but uh, anyway, consider me biased. Uh, I obviously own shares or soon own shares of all companies mentioned. Uh, three of them are uh, banner sponsors. This is not investing advice. Uh, don't invest money you cannot afford to lose. And remember that typically private placements, you lock up, you lock, the, the shares are locked up for four months. So it's like if you need money in four, uh, within four months, do not invest in a private placement because you can't sell the shares uh, before that time is up uh, yeah it's all about risk reward no guarantees uh, and uh, yeah I, I have I can't guarantee that any of these will be big success stories uh, this is just what I'm doing right now uh, for the reasons I, I mentioned uh, thanks for listening have a great day. Bye.